Hi, this is Sarit Schwetzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneir Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your Creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your source. Welcome to episode four of the It Is Top podcast. We are up to, let's see, where are we up to? We're up to the 22nd of Kislev, the uh, leap year entry. So in today, we're continuing with the forward of the Alter Rebbe to the book. And in this forward, he's, we're leaving off, those of you that listened to the episode from last time, uh, last time we, we brought up a bunch of different challenges that the Alter Rebbe preemptively brought up that he knew people might have in terms of this book and how the limitations of a book in general of this sort and the limitations of having a book replace a live teacher and how you know there really are certain things that you can only really get from a live mentor that are going to be lacking when you have a book. Uh, if you want details on that, obviously listen to the previous episode. But uh, in short, you know what it really came down to was this idea of the individualized attention and the particular answers that to the way that a live mentor can really give their students a very particular type of response and very particular type of guidance that's specific to them and in a way that they know will be heard versus that's kind of lacking in a book because when a person is reading a book and trying to learn on their own from a book, um, you know, that's they're it's going to be really limited because they're limited to their minds, they're limited to their personality, to their biases, to the level of their soul. There's so many different limitations that are going to come up from just trying to understand things on their own from a book. So here in today's uh, section of the forward, the ultra Rebbe tries to uh, give a little bit of an answer to that. Like he sort of explains why nevertheless, in spite of these challenges, he decided to go about writing down these, these teachings. And in short, basically what he says is he says that these, this book is not written just for anybody. He said that he was writing this for his students. He was writing this for his chassidim, who he knew really, really well. He had already had, you know, hours and hours and years of, you know, personal consultation with them. So he knew them very well. So it wasn't just like a random book. Future commentators have said, well, okay, we, we never met the altar Rabbi. We did, he, he didn't know us. We never had a personal audience with him. But the the answer to that is that the ultra rabbi kind of did know us <laughs> as strange as that sounds is he he did i mean he knew he, because he knew his followers by virtue of studying this book you become one of his followers and even though sure every single soul is really unique at the end of the day we really do share a lot of commonalities and the ultra rabbi was so well versed in souls and in terms of you know knowing his students and knowing everybody and what um and what each each one of his disciples specifically need he felt that this was enough for him to put his thoughts and teachings together in a book that would be a little bit more universal and applicable to everybody so and then once again he reiterates the fact that these aren't his own ideas these are teachings that he compiled from a few places. One is from well-known teachers that, you know, are just kind of universally recognized in the Torah. Uh, Another one is from his own mentors, the people that he thought of as his mentors, which were rabbis who were the elder Hasidim of the Magid of Masrich, who was his teacher. The altar of his teacher was the Magid of Masrich. And these older rabbis who he considered to be his mentor had moved to Israel. And then he also said that some of the things that he's compiling here are things that he learned from them directly in before they moved from to Israel. 
So, and he said that what this book is really made up of is it's answers to recurring questions that would come up. So he said that what he started to notice with his chassidim when he would have different consultations with them is that there were a lot of issues that started to come up that were very recurring. And usually they involved how to serve God and, you know, how their individual service of God needed to be. And so he said, you know, just because of time constraints, it just became not very practical for him to answer every single person in the same way and he also said that there's something called forgetfulness <laughs> and people can often you know I don't know if you've ever had this experience where you go to ask somebody for advice and the person gives you advice and then you know a couple of years later maybe not a couple of years later maybe a, a month later maybe a week later maybe a day later you don't necessarily remember the advice that they gave you or maybe you kind of like hear what you want to hear you know what I mean and you kind of like forget quote unquote the rest so in putting his responses into writing like this the Alter Rebbe felt that this would be a way to counteract that and to kind of like solidify and record his answers so that there would not be a need for a private audience that he had before and people could actually look up the answers and it would be right there set in stone or in ink rather what the Alter Rebbe's thoughts were on any specific issues that might come up that he felt were just these recurring issues that everybody had. And then he addresses the idea that he says that as, as we mentioned in yesterday's episode, we talked about how, yes, it's true that, you know, some people do have a more limited mind and won't necessarily some people will understand these teachings as we go through the book we'll see you know some of the some of the teachings are fairly straightforward some of them are a little bit more difficult so somebody who necessarily is who isn't necessarily really intellectually adept let's say uh, might find themselves like reading this or even if you are you know you might be reading some of these teachings and kind of having a, a tough time understanding exactly what he's trying to say as he said in those instances he says that you must go and discuss it with the teachers in your town, like with your local Torah scholars, basically. And he beseeches the local to Torah scholars and he says, when people come to you and they ask your advice and they, they present these teachings that they learned in this book and they say they don't really understand them, these teachers should not have have what's called like false humility they shouldn't say oh I'm not really sure I don't know or whatever it's they should understand that they as scholars should not remain quiet but should actually offer the advice that the people are asking for and he says that the punishment for not doing so is actually pretty severe it's likened to the punishment of not of withholding food from somebody and by contrast, on the other hand, um, the reward for this is really great. If they do, actually, they're going to have a lot of blessings from God and everything. And then in this section, the altar Rebbe finishes off and he says that he gives this like this general blessing. And he says that he blesses that we should live in a time when there won't be a need anymore for one person to teach one another, but rather the knowledge of God will fill the entire earth. Um, and that is a verse from Isaiah. Isaiah 11 9 it's pretty it's pretty famous if you've heard of it where it says for the knowledge of God will fill the earth as the waters fill the sea so that is the that's today's podcast and it's pretty short pretty straightforward and I look forward to continuing next time next time it looks like we are going to be finishing the board and then after that we're going to get straight into the book finally and we'll start getting into these teachings they're really deep they're really really transformative i'm really excited to learn them with you thanks for listening to the it is top podcast hosted by sarit switzer this podcast is dedicated in loving memory of my maternal grandfather abraham yitzhak ben benyamin cohen of blessed memory music by shoshana if you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show, please share it with others and subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Top project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow, and until then, have a great day.